Yo, what's up YouTube? This is a quick video about how I managed to get one of these relays working. It's a 24 volt relay. I've got this power supply here, which I was given, which is very nice indeed. It's actually a very high quality one. You can see it's branded and it runs at 100 and 240, which is what I want. So we can see now the timer, the relay on the right hand side shows the on mode, which is on for 11 seconds and then off for 11 seconds. This lamp here is an LED light that I made out of some scrap and I thought as LEDs run a, a sort of variable voltage then it would be a good thing to use to demonstrate it. What I'm going to do is the power supply is putting out 19.56 volts at the moment so I'm going to turn that up to oh, wrong one. turn it up to 23 so you'll see now the LED is a lot brighter that's as bright as it goes which is too bright that's quite nice so the good thing about these relays is they're just incredibly reliable and they'll probably go on and off millions of times without breaking. This is a cheaper unbranded one. You can actually see here this is a very good example of how desperate some people are to replicate brand names. Like there's a branded one called Omron and they've called this O111ROM in the hope that someone will maybe think that it's a branded one when it isn't. What I've taken to doing with any power supplies I get is working out the minimum and maximum voltage and making a note of it on the power supply itself. So if I don't have a multimeter handy, I know if I want 29.6, I just crank it all the way to the top. You can actually hear the power supply, the fan change there. So the good thing about it is that the power supply is on constantly. It's just this is then applying whatever load is attached to it which in this case is a light. I have attached a dump load to it and that works which brings us on to the reason I wanted to start playing with these is because I wanted to get it working off my wind turbine. I wanted some kind of automatic system where this would be replaced by batteries and then this just comes on every five seconds and then off for ten seconds or you can you can set it up any way you like. I'll just show you that. So I've turned it off and then it actually has a mode, zero, 01 of a second. I don't know if you can see that. So if we put it on for, oops. That should stay on for four and one tenth of a second and then go off for the same amount of time. So let's see. Plug the power supply back in. I don't have it on the switch yet. So there you can see they're incredibly versatile and yeah they're very good so I'm just going to show you how it's wired up in this instance and then in the next video I'll probably uh, have a go at getting it working off two car batteries which would be interesting that this is a 24 volt so let me just switch the power supply off again. So don't worry too much about the colours of the wiring because I just used the wiring that I had available. So firstly, this number here, which is number marked number two, is where you have both the neutral or the negative. Okay, so in this case, this one is attached to the negative of the power supply and then it also goes out to the negative of the load. Okay then you've got these two here which are marked seven and eight let me try and get a bit more close up here right that's a bit closer so firstly pins seven and eight need to be joined together with a small loop of wire i've no idea why that is but that is the case this wire here coming out of number seven goes to the positive or the live depending on whether it's dc or ac so seven to the positive of the power supply. Then if we look at what is the top, we only have one connection here and that 
is on number five, pin number five, which needs to go to the live or the positive. Okay, so we'll just quickly go over that again. Pin number two goes to the negative or the neutral of the power supply and then also goes out to the negative or the neutral on the load. Five goes to the positive of the load. Seven and eight are joined together and seven goes to the positive from the power supply. It's also worth noting that they seem to put these little tags for some reason, maybe for wires to go in, I don't know, there's no hole there, but that is always the top of the device. So we'll plug it in again, making sure it's oriented the correct way. And then we turn the power supply on. And it will just do its thing. Very handy little devices. Very handy indeed. This is the top label of a 110 volt AC one, which you can see indicated by the small red dot. So that would work on a US voltage system. Right, so one final thing. I'll just show you it running in ultra fast mode. It's gonna get a bit clicky. Let's turn on the juice. But yeah, I'm not sure. That's the multimeter, I'm just turning that off. I'm not sure how long the power supply had worked doing this. But interestingly, I think that the LEDs would be fine and would take an unlimited amount of on and off. I'm just going to put that bit of paper over and turn up the load a little bit. Power supply, sorry. I put that bit of paper over because of how bright it gets. I don't know if you heard that, there's a definite change in the noise that that thing is making. I'm going to turn it down again. Quieter, and then back up. And then yeah, that's it. But I thought you'd be interested to know that if you had an applicator, if you had some kind of really random application where you needed something to turn on and off that quickly, then that may do the job. So thank you for watching. In the next video, when my arm's feeling a bit better, which isn't really the minute, uh, I'll go outside and I'll try and get it working from the car batteries because that would be interesting as well. Peace.